Hello everybody, Corey here. We're going to go over the trades and holdings for the Yield Mat single stock ETFs and YBIT. Just a reminder, I'm not a qualified licensed investment or financial advisor. I just gather the data and present it to you so you don't have to. Yield Max ETFs are extremely risky. Please make sure you've read through the prospectus, read the risk, and looked at the historical data on these ETFs before investing in them. Please make sure you understand completely what you're investing in before doing so. All right, so uh, let's jump over here. We're going to go into, like I said, all the holds and tradings. Of course, we do have our daily roundup that we do do separately. It just gives you, um, you know, total sums up all the trades, gives you net assets, outstanding shares, nav stock prices some comparison uh it has the you know the days to recovery information here as far as recovering from its distribution where we're at rate wise how many days it took it to initially recover rankings and uh, so much more there and then a little bit more data here uh, so all that's on the daily roundup if you want to see that if you want to see more in-depth uh, data here that's that will be this video so our first trades there are aptly, so we'll just go over here to our holdings because our first stock on here, our first ETF is Abney. Um, just a reminder on these, um, these single stock ETFs that are going long, um, we want the stock price, we prefer the stock price to be above the synthetic strike price, which in this case is 145, and below the short call or near the short call strike price, which in this case is 150. Uh, so our stock is currently at 146.92, so this one does do that. Uh, it does do what we want it to do, right? Uh, for the short uh, ETFs, Fiat and Crash, uh, those we will want uh, the opposite so and then we also have an extra long call that goes with those but anyway um, so yeah let's jump in here so we have our uh, short call that's going to expire tomorrow with the 150 strike price we're currently underneath that two percent uh, should the stop be able to get up to 150 we're looking at about maybe a <laughs> a 42 cent upside for Abney. If we go into AIYY, we don't have any trades here. We have our short call that expires next Friday with a $31 strike price. We're currently underneath that 9%. Uh, looks like we have an upside here of about a dollar and two cents for AIYY if it can get up to about uh, $31. I do not know what's wrong with my cat. CC. All right, so AMDY, we have a short call that expires next Friday with 175 strike price. We're currently underneath that 11% because the stock has dropped so much uh, in the past week. Last week, it was at least, I think, up to $184. Um, so if we could get up to 175 and we can recover, we could go up possibly $1.70 for the short calls. Uh, then we have AMZ here. We have two short calls that expire next week, 195 and 197.50 strike prices. We're currently underneath those 6 and 7%. Uh, looks like we could uh, go up here about 62 cents if we can get up to that 195 at strike price. And then Apple here. We have some trades. So uh, let's see what we got. All right, so we have a lot of stuff going on here. So we have okay. So first, they've added a hundred and five contracts um, where people have been buying in. So we have a hundred and five here for a short call, and then the hundred and five for the synthetic. The rest of these will be closing out the short calls that were going to expire uh, tomorrow. And then um, we have these here um, for next week. Now, this one is just red because it was uh, coded wrong. So I had to hard type over all of my formulas because this one 
should have been uh, SS just like the rest of these. Um, but nothing really for you to worry about there. Uh, but the short calls that we closed out, we had a 232.50, 235.00, and 237.50 stroke prices. We were below those 4 to 6 percent. They ended up paying uh, 23 cents a share to close out to 232.50 and 8 and 4 cents to close out to the other ones. Uh, and then we have the three three short calls even though we have four here we have three different strike prices there uh, so I have 230 232 50 and 235 and then you can see all those prices over here as far as the premium they received there and then the synthetic data as well so overall of all these trades they actually brought in 50,500 So if we go over to our holdings here, um, we can see our short calls there. The three short calls are currently under those three, four, and five percent. We're looking at about forty cent upside here. Um, for the short call. And I didn't mention this before, but you know, these could go up more also based on the market value of the synthetic uh, position as well. Of course, right now, we're looking pretty good on that one here for Apple. If we move on to Coney, let's see what our next trades were. We have Disney. All right, so Coney here, we have a short call with a 275 strike price, which expires next Friday. Wow, we're looking at about almost three dollar upside here for Coney. If we could get up, of course, it's two seventy five. Um, Coney might have hit two seventy five before, uh, but we will see. We can see today that it went down over a dollar. All right, and then we have Disney. We had some trades over there. Honestly, I don't know if any of those are closed out. It doesn't look like it, but let's just check. Yeah. All we did is they added 100 contracts here to the synthetic position and created a short call for next week uh, with a $100 strike price for those 100 contracts. Uh, then we have the two short calls that expire tomorrow. We have a $99 and $100, and we're underneath that 2 and 3%. Looks like we have about $0.34 cents here uh, for the upside for Dizzo for the short calls. And then we have... Phoebe. So let's check out those trades. All right. So our stock price was way below our strike price. So let's knock out the easy one first. So they added 35 contracts here to the synthetic position and created a new short call for next week. And then they closed out. They closed out all the short calls that were going to expire uh, tomorrow and moved all of those to next week. So we had a 502 50, 515, 517 50, and a 555 strike price. The strike price for next week is 495, so significantly lower than all the rest of those. Of course, these are the prices uh, per share. Uh, that would pay to close those out. Seventeen, six, seven, and four cents, which ended up costing about thirteen and a half thousand dollars. Of course, we brought in um, quite a bit of premium for this week's short calls. All right, so let's just look overall, Phoebe. We brought in eight hundred thousand, almost eight hundred thousand dollars for all of Phoebe's trades there. So we see the short call with four ninety five strike price. We're currently underneath that by four percent. We're looking at upside of about sixty eight cents here for the short calls for Phoebe. 
Then we have GDXY. So I'm not sure what happened, but we do have here that they closed out this short call. They paid 37 cents to close it out. I don't know at what point that was today because this shows a 13 cent difference. Um, but they did not, there wasn't a trade on here. Um, but tomorrow's Friday, so it should happen tomorrow. I don't know what the thought process was behind that. So anyway, that's why this is yellow, because these do not equal uh, the number of synthetic shares there. So two short calls that expire tomorrow with the $39 and $40 strike price. Um, we're underneath, well, no, I'm sorry, not underneath. Well, we are underneath those 3 and 5%, but... Uh, possible upside tomorrow of about 50 cents here for the short calls for GDXY. Let's just make sure we didn't have anything here for GUI. No, so JPMO will be next. All right, for GUI here, we have a short call that expires next week. We have a 195 strike price. We're currently underneath at 9%. Uh, looks like we dropped a few dollars there today on Alphabet. Um, it looks like we have an upside of about a dollar fifty-two for the short call for GUI. Then we have JPMO. You can see that they added thirty contracts to the synthetic and uh, created a new short call um, that will expire next week with a two fifteen strike price, which we're under two percent. Let's just make sure there were no other trades. There were not. And then Marnie's additional also. All right, we also have the short call, two more short calls for next week with a 220 and 22250 strike price. We're underneath those five and six percent. And wow, JPMO actually dropped seven uh, dollars today, but uh looks like they only dropped JPMO only dropped about uh, 50 cents. Uh, possible upside here, though, um, I don't know, maybe about 70 or so cents here for the short calls. And then we have Mernie here. You can see they added 85 contracts to the synthetic and created a new short call for next week with 130 strike price, a uh, short call strike price. So you see today... Uh, Moderna, Moderna did drop a few dollars here. Um, it looks about almost three dollars, while Mernie dropped about twenty-five cents. Um, we have the strike price of one twenty-nine that expires tomorrow. We're currently underneath that six percent. Should this be able to come up, Marnie would be able to come up about eighty-nine cents. Then we have MSFO. So we had some closures. So let's look at this one. So we had a short call with a 462.50 strike price. Uh, looks like they paid six cents to close those out and push that out to next Friday with a 450 strike price. So if we look here, uh, we're underneath that 450 by 2% or 10, 10 ish dollars. Uh, looking at a possible upside of about 44 cents here for MSFO. All right, so I have Misty here with a short call that expires the next Friday with a sixteen seventy five strike price. We're currently underneath that seven percent possible upside here of about two dollars. Then we have Nephilim here with a short call that expires tomorrow with a seven hundred forty dollars strike price. Um, the last time I saw it, even though Netflix initially went down, it did come back up to about the same stock price. Um, and that was, again, last time I looked at it. But we show here a possible upside of about $2.18 through tomorrow. Of course, I don't know that Netflix is actually going to go up tomorrow since it initially went down based off its forward guidance for ad revenue and stuff. So then we go to NVIDI. So they added, uh, you know, 32,220 uh, contracts here. 
and uh, they but it still does not add up to the total amount. So we see we have 70,690 contracts. Um, so there'll probably be some more put on here tomorrow. I don't know if it's just because math wasn't done or or what. I don't know. But um, let's see. We have three short calls that expire next Friday with the 125, 126, and 127 strike price. And it looks like we have about 50 or so cent upside just for the short calls for NVIDIA. All right. And then we have OARC here. We have a short call that expires tomorrow. This actually came down below the short call. Um so we're underneath that, so that looks pretty good. Uh, $47 strike price underneath at 1% or $0.43. Cents. Possible upside of $0.10 cents here for OARC sh for the short calls. And then we have PayPay Pay here. So... All right, so I was thinking... So they added 275 contracts here to the synthetic and created two new short calls for next week with a $60 and $63 strike prices, which are currently underneath 3 and 5%. We also have the short calls that expire tomorrow with a $61 and $62 strike price. We're underneath those 2 and 3%. Uh, we're looking at about $0.43 cent upside here if uh, PayPal can go back up. It looks like we did drop $1.24 today to $60. All right, so then we have a Snowy. So for Snowy here, it looks like they closed out the short calls that were going to expire tomorrow with the $1.43 and $1.44 strike prices. Uh, looks like we've paid five cents a share here to close those out. And for next Friday, our strike price there is going to be 140. So if we look over here, we can see for the 140, we're underneath that 7%. We did drop. I don't know why, uh, unless it's just because of the overall market dropping. But this one did drop significantly today. Um, about five dollars. Not sure exactly why. All right, so we have a possible upside of about a dollar thirty nine if Snowy can get back up to about a hundred and forty dollars next week for those short calls. Then we have Squee here. They added a hundred contracts to the synthetic and created a new short call for next week with a seventy three dollar strike price, which are currently under seven percent. Uh, so we were up around that this week, and now it's dropped back down today to $68. We do have two short calls that expire tomorrow with the $71 and $72.50 strike price. We're currently underneath those 4 and 6%. Look at a possible upside of $0.80 cents, uh, if the stock can go up to $71 tomorrow. And then we have Tesla here. We have a short call that expires tomorrow with a 275 strike price. Currently underneath that by 9%. And we have a short call that expires next Friday with a 28250 strike price. We're underneath that 12%. So we're looking at upside of about $1.52 here for Tesla if it can go up to 275 tomorrow, which is $25. So I don't know that that will happen. Let me just look over here. Just wanted to check out. All right. All right, so we go to Zomo. We have two short calls that expire next Friday. We have 119 and 122 strike price. We can see for that 119, we're only underneath that by 20 cents. So we'll have about three cent upside here for the short calls for Zomo. And then we have crash here. So we have a, a little bit of an issue. Not sure what happened. Uh, but they added 295 contracts um, to this one. That's the trade. However, they didn't close out the 295 contracts at the 400 uh, strike price that expires tomorrow. Maybe they did. Maybe just didn't make it to the trade. I don't know. Um, but... It's a little issue that we have today, but we have the short put with a $237.50 strike price. We're currently above that by 5%. 
And then we have Fiat here. So, so Fiat had two short puts with a 207.50 and a 212.50 strike price. Um, did I? Yeah, I added. Okay. These shouldn't actually have been here. Um, so I said 207.50, 212.50. And then, so next week, it looks like these have been moved to the 225 strike price that will expire next week. Friday. So if we look over here, we can see that 225 strike price. We're currently above that by 4%, even though the stock did, uh, coin did end up dropping about 16 or so dollars today. All right, then we have a Y bet down here. Um, we have two short calls that expire next week with a 24 and 24.50 strike price. We're currently underneath those 9 and 7%. But then we also have our synthetic um, that will expire in a couple of weeks with the $35 strike price. And we're currently underneath those 37%. Uh, possible upside here for the short calls. Mm, I don't know, somewhere around... 60 or so cents maybe um, for YBIT if uh, BIDO can get up to the $24 mark. All right. Let me make sure I didn't have any else down there. Oh, we did have Zomo out down here. I'm sorry about that. That's what I get for going. I didn't look down there. So let's see. Zomo. So yeah, here for Zomo, we had 80 contracts. So they added 80 to the synthetic and created that new short call uh, for next week at that 122 strike price. All right. Well, tomorrow is Friday. Uh, I know we had about a week or so of green days. We had two extremely bad days and I guess we'll see how we close out tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.